Okay, our next background lecture on group theory is group multiplication tables. Again, this is optional, but just something might help you in terms of constructing some background knowledge for the material. So if I have H elements in a group, I can construct a group multiplication table. So H rows times H columns, which contains H squared entries. Uh, the convention is that multiplication is the column element times the row element. Because remember that uh, commutation does not usually hold. Um, AB is not necessarily equal to BA. So the intersection of column X and row Y is the element given by XY. Uh, it's necessary that each row and each column in the group multiplication table lists each of the elements only once. So no two rows or columns may be, and no two rows or no two columns may be identical. It's beyond our uh, treatment right here, but we'll just take that as given. So. so we have one possible group multiplication table for order two. I have two components here, uh, A and the identity element E. And A, A is equal to E. Okay, let's look at order three. So order three, I have two different possibilities. Uh, first, well, first off, I had, you can see I filled in in this. I filled in the this row and this column because they involve the identity element. So we know what the answers are to those. My next step, though, is I need to decide what goes in right here. And let's suppose that let's let's start with let's suppose that uh, AA A is equal to E. Well then, I need to have, uh, if AA, so I'm going across here, AE, then this must be B here, but I can't be B because then I have the same element is going to be in this column, uh, and so I can't do that. Instead, it, it's going to be B, and then we can fill in, so now A, B, uh, A times B is E, B times A is E, they're reciprocal of each other, and B times B is A, and this now works. I'm just going to give it to fourth order. Um, we can work these out, but this is beyond the, this is beyond the, excuse me, beyond the course. When I get to larger and larger orders, there are more possibilities for different groups. And I would say like any fourth order group, any group with order four has to have these tables, one table or the other table. So if I have molecule with four symmetry elements, uh, three plus identity, then I know that it has to, the multiplication of those elements needs to follow one table or the other. The last concept is the idea of subgroups. And a subgroup is part of a larger group, which is its own consistent group. So we've got this one first. You can see that that's sort of redundant of first order. E times E is E. And, all, and there are molecules where all I have is E. Actually, it's C1, so maybe not E. Um, <clears throat> another subgroup is this one. So E, D, and F constitute their own subgroup. And so I could set up my own table. So G, not G6, but G is a G3, E, D, F, E, D, F, and of course it's going to be E, D, F, D, F, F, E, E, D. Okay, that is all I have to say about uh, groups and subgroups. When we, uh, the rest of our lectures will be more, a little more fundamental in terms of operations that we need to perform in terms of the expectations of this class.